So I'm going to use this example problem to um, not only just solve a simple problem, but um, to really kind of solidify some of, the some of the concepts. So if you have not already done so, as usual, please try to solve this question on your own and then um, come back to this video when you're done. So let's take a look at the very first question. So basically what I've done is I've taken two parallel plates. I've hooked up a, a 12 volt battery here, giving this a positive charge, giving this a negative charge. So the first question is what is the electric potential at the top plate? And actually this is not, um, not a great question at this point because you have to define what your zero potential point is. So just like when we talked about gravity gravitational potential, we said um, the ground was our zero joule state or the bottom was our zero joule state. We have to do the same thing here. For example, if we call this the zero volt state, then up here we would say the potential is 12 volts at the top. However, if I define this as my zero volt place, then down here this would be negative 12 volts. In fact, if I called right in the middle, zero volts, then below would be negative six volts and above would be positive six volts and in the middle would be zero. The key is the difference between these two has to be 12 volts. So oftentimes for simplicity, we're just going to make the negative plate our zero point. In fact, you probably heard the word ground used before. Symbol for ground looks like that. And basically that's just defining where your zero volt location is going to be. So knowing that, that means that this would be 0 volts, up here would be 12 volts, and halfway would be 6 volts. Question B says we're going to go ahead and place a proton at the bottom plate. We're going to move it up to the top plate. We want to know how much work is needed to do this. So there's a couple ways we could do it. Remember work is equal to force parallel to distance. The other thing we can do is say, well, the work it takes to move it up here, that's going to be equal to the change in the electric potential energy. And I think in the case of this problem, this would be an easier way to go. Remember, voltage or electric potential is defined as the electric potential energy divided by the charge or the change in voltage or potential difference is equal to the change in potential over charge. So if we want to find the work, we're just going to need to find this change in potential. And that's just going to simply be the, the difference in this potential times the charge. Okay. And so for this problem, that's going to be pretty straightforward. If we're at zero volts to 12 volts, Let's write this as joules per coulomb. So 12 joules per coulomb, zero to 12, and then one electron, or actually proton, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Which means the amount of work needed to move up, it's gonna be 12 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Um, let's see, that's gonna be 1.92 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. So in other words, to move it from here up to here, that's how much work it would take me to move it up this way. That's also how much potential energy the charge would now have at that point. Notice if I started in the middle and I moved it from here to here, it would take half as much work to get it to move it up to this point. All right, so question C, we're gonna now release that proton. We use a fresh piece of paper here. So we're going to go ahead and release that proton and let it go all the way down to the bottom. So in this case, um, we're just going to use the old conservation of energy concept. So notice if we call this ground state the very bottom, our zero point, then up here we have 100% potential energy. And this is going to be electric potential energy. And as it's moving down, it's going to be losing its potential energy until it reaches the bottom plate, in which case it's now turning into a kinetic energy. So we're just going to use UE is equal to KE, and we know kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And in this case, 
let's see what did we get we got 1.92 times 10 to the negative 18 joules that was our starting energy and then we're going to take the mass of the proton that's 1.67 10 to the negative 27 kilograms times v squared so go ahead and do your algebra when you do it you're going to get make sure you get what i get 4.8 times 10 to the fourth meters per second and that's how fast it would be moving way down here right at the bottom right before it hits the pl bottom plate question d says what is the electric field in between the two plates so remember there's going to be a field here i didn't draw it out but let's do it right now remember the electric field is what would happen if we put a plus a positive charge test charge here well the plus is going to head on down from positive to negative so our electric field in between the plates looks something like this and so we want to figure out uh, what's the strength of that electric field we do know for parallel plates that the electric field is going to be equivalent equal all the way through and constant except on the edges the edges it's going to be slightly less but um, for our purposes in between it's going to be the same so to use this we're going to go back to this our little work equals force times distance so let's derive this equation and I'm going to derive this and you can use this in future problems. So remember work equals force parallel to distance. Recall that the force, if we're going to do work moving this up, it's going to have to be equivalent to the electric field force times the value of charge that's pushing against it. Now this is also going to be as we just stated before, equal to the change in potential energy, which is equal to the potential times Q. So notice what happens here. We'll go Q cancel, Q cancel, and we're left with our ED equals our electric potential. Now one important thing to realize here is that these are all, this is in this problem we were assuming the change in distance, the change in voltage from the bottom of the plate to the top of the plate. So in other words, if I use a, a voltage of 12 from zero to here, 12, then I'd have to use um, the distance would be the same distance from here to the top. And I don't think I labeled it here, so let's do that now. That should be four centimeters. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to have E times 4 centimeters, which is 0 0.04 meters, is going to equal our change in volts, which would be 12. So again, I guess what I was trying to say earlier is if we went from 6 to 12, that would be a change of 12, but then the distance we would use would just be this halfway distance, or 2 centimeters, and you would end up with the same value for E. E would be the same regardless. So we're going to get 12 divided by 0.04, and I believe that is 300. Notice the units here. We have volts per meter. Oops. Okay, so we have 12 divided by 0.04. We're going to get 300 volts per meter. If you recall back from when we talked about electric fields, we usually use the, the newtons per coulomb. Well, these are the same. If you were to break it down into their bare bones, you'd see that those are actually the same exact units. The last question says, what are the, what's the acceleration of the proton during this time? Um, so honestly, at this point, knowing what we know, the easiest thing probably to do would be to use some kinematics. Uh, we know the velocity at the top is zero. We know the velocity at the bottom is the final and then we know the distance that it's traveled so based on this problem I would probably just simply use your good old kinematics equation here um, but I'm going to show you a kind of a different way to do this using uh, f equals ma so if we use f equals ma here um, we know the force on that charge is going to be equal to eq as we stated before that should equal m times a, or a should equal eq over m. 
So I'm just showing you this way because usually um, when they'd ask this problem would be a little bit earlier in the problem and not after we found the final velocity. So um, let's just use this and see what we get. And maybe if you want to check with the kinematics, since it's pretty easy to do, go ahead and verify that you can do it both ways. So in this case, our electric field we just calculated was 300. And again, I'll use um, newtons per coulomb this time, just so you can see what happens. And then we're going to multiply by that charge on 1, 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then we'll go ahead and divide it by the mass of a proton, 1.67. 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Okay, you're going to go ahead and do the acceleration. Um, when I do it, verify that you get the same thing. 2.87, 10 to the 10th. Okay, wow, check that out. So that is a huge acceleration. In fact, maybe you wondered to yourself at some point, how come you know, if I just stuck a proton here and there were no plates, we would expect it to fall to the ground because of gravity, right? How come we're, we've just kind of ignored gravity throughout this problem? Well, the answer to that is right here. The acceleration due to this electric field is 10 to the 10th. The acceleration due to gravity, if you remember, is 9.8. So this is literally, what's that, about 2 billion times larger than the acceleration due to gravity. So obviously this is negligible with respect to the acceleration of that proton.